What's happening, y'all? Your boy's back at it again. Talking about this Mortal Kombat 11. And I'm actually not finished with Mortal Kombat 11 being finished. Because as I've had time to sit back and ruminate on the history of this game and the life cycle of the support of this game, it actually pisses me off um, quite a fair bit, you know. Um, I wasn't one of those people that hated the idea of this game or had an issue with trivial shit like women not being sexified as they used to be. You know, I didn't have a problem with folks's, uh, folks had issues with Jax's arcade ending where he stopped slavery. You know, you had other people talk about, so what about other slavery and all this bullshit? I, I wasn't, I didn't care none about that. Um, I wasn't whining about the quote unquote lack of combos or the, the stylistic direction of the game or none of that stuff. I rolled with all of that. And as a matter of fact, I enjoy all of it. You know, I'm just a guy who genuinely enjoys the game and tried to play the hell out of it. Well, not tried to, like I'm stopping. I'm still going to play it. Uh, I play the hell out of the game. But from the very beginning, there were gripes that myself and millions of other people that played this game had. And with Mortal Kombat 11's support cycle coming to an end, a lot of these gripes have not been addressed. And so the fact that NRS can just sit there and move on with no DLC, no support, no patches, none of that shit. You know, it sort of reads as a big fuck you to the people that actually want to try to enjoy this game, but just have a couple gripes that need to be addressed here and there. As a matter of fact, you know, I feel so incensed about it that I did something that I normally don't even do. I don't know if y'all hear that right there, but that's paper. I actually wrote shit down for this video. Now, that may not seem like a big deal, but it's a radical departure from what I normally do because I get up on this mic and I speak extemporaneously. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I speak from off the top of the dome, freestyle from the heart, however you you know, you want to phrase it. But my point is, I don't write down notes for my videos. I just talk. You know? But I had to write down the gripes I had for this game so that I could talk about them in a cohesive and seamless manner. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same gripes that I mentioned before. Because in my previous video, MK11 is finished, I said the breakaway system's a problem, the wake up system's a problem, the fatal blow system's a problem, uh, variations are somewhat of a problem, uh, but I didn't mention crushing blows. I didn't mention those, because there's gaps in equity with crushing blows. You know what I mean? You have a lot of crushing blows that are completely trash and useless. My bad, Tuxie. When I said completely, I scared the shit out of my cat. My bad, y'all. But anyway, uh, some crushing blows are completely garbage. And others are just like, wow. They give the character... Well, I'll talk more about that in a minute. So, point is... There were gripes I never even talked about. And here's one I didn't even write down. Uh, gear. You know, now we have all this gear in the game, some of which was supposed to be unlocked in some magical way, presumably by NRS putting out a patch or something. 
that allowed us to unlock this stuff and now it's now there's no way to get it you know what i'm saying so those collectionists that grind the game in order to get all their favorite gear for their favorite characters they can't even do it because there's some gear that nrs was supposed to release and now they're not going to and so i guess the purpose of this video is to say that nrs is making a big mistake by deciding to not support this game anymore and I don't know if it's an NRS decision or a WB decision I don't give a fuck frankly whose decision it is it's a piss poor decision at the very least this game should continue to get hot fixes I don't see why that can't happen there's no ain't no goddamn excuse as to why that can't happen I mean I understand you know, that patches have to go through approval and all this kind of stuff. Okay. But I don't see why y'all can't do hot fixes that don't even require a download. Y'all, they can do that. I don't give a damn what the hierarchy is at WB or, you know, but what the relationship between WB and NRS is. The right thing for NRS to do would be to continue to hot fix this game to at the very least address those nagging issues that the most ardent fans and supporters have been talking about since April of 2019 when the game first came out. Because let's be clear, NRS's statement talking about some we supported this game for over two years, while technically true. It's bullshit. It rings very hollow because we went for months and months and months and months and months between patches, updates, and things of that nature. You know, prior to this last hot fix that we got, it had been eight months since NRS did anything for this game. Eight months, that's two-thirds of a year. So, if we being serious, the support cycle really lasted less than two years. And that's a travesty because the fans were promised more than the two-year cycle that we get from Netherrealm. We were promised more than that. And they failed to deliver, point-blank period. And that right there is anti-consumer as hell it it uh destroys faith good faith between your fans and yourself and it helps besmirch your reputation in the eyes of the people that have supported you through it all because the majority of us have played all the damn mortal combats the good ones, the mediocre ones, the shitty ones, the bad ports for uh, mobile consoles, you know, the ones that came out on PlayStation and had bad music and terrible development and all that kind of stuff, you know. We played through the 3D Mortal Kombat's, which half of us were divided on because we couldn't do jumps and special moves and Lukanga died and all this kind of stuff. Like, we stuck with this company and this franchise through a lot of shit. And we helped build this community to where it is today. And make this game a really high-selling franchise. This is probably the best-selling fighting game in the world behind Smash Brothers. Okay? We helped do that. That's a us buying that shit. Bunch of casuals too, but it's us buying this motherfucker and still playing it. You know what I mean? And so, we are the last people that need to be told to suck a dick. Excuse my French. We're the last ones that need to be told that we're entitled on Ed Boon's Twitter. You understand? Nah, we not entitled. Because every other fighting game community gets three plus years of support 
for their developers, even from crazy ass Capcom. Okay? Street Fighter 4, no, Street Fighter 5 came out before my wife and I moved into this house five years ago. And that game is still being supported until the new shit dropped. So, Mortal Kombat, or NRS is the only fighting game franchise that doesn't support their games for more than two years. So, yeah, we are rightfully uh, confused and feel shafted, you understand? But anyway, that's enough of my pontificating. Let me talk about these issues that NRS still needs to address. For starters, the breakaway system. I hope the breakaway system never makes a return to any Mortal Kombat ever again after the experience with it in this game. It was a nice idea and it actually could have worked in this game if it were remade in the following ways but in its current form the breakaway system occurs mostly by accident in a match because you're trying to low block something you low block it too late and then you drop out of something you didn't want to drop out of which is a drain on your meter and when it doesn't occur accidentally it's quite malicious because it actually can punish the person who made the better decision in neutral people actually get full comboed for comboing people because of this system and that's inherently unfair and then what happens is everyone isn't universally affected the same way by the breakaway system see characters like Liu Kang I've never been able to combo Liu Kang by using breakaway that's because a lot of his combos you can't even break out of them to begin with okay so you can't break out of his stuff and the little bitty stuff you can break out of you still can't punish him anyway that's how it ought to work for everybody really but then you have a character like scorpion scorpion gets full combo punished for trying to combo people still um if you do any combo into um you do any string into EX teleport the opponent can wait for you to get balls deep into your combo they drop at a specific time and they can combo you full combo punish right in the middle of your string what's worse yet is uh the person doing the initial combo that got dropped out of the special moves still come out after the opponent has dropped out of the air and that's strange because in this fighting game when you throw out a normal and it's whiff you can't cancel into special moves like you can't cancel into special moves on whiff you can only cancel into them on hit or block right but when you're doing a combo and the opponent drops out you're still whiffing normals but then the specials come out which drags your combo even uh, out even further and all but guarantees that you get killed with a combo for comboing somebody so scorpion uh can get full combo punish for comboing people and it ain't just him shao khan has the same problem Scarlet has the same problem. Sometimes Johnny Cage has the same problem. Sometimes Sub Zero has the same problem. Not that Sub Zero needs any buffs. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that sometimes Sub Zero can get comboed for comboing people, which is trash. Um, these are some of the characters I can think of, think of off the top of my head. Other characters have the same problem. You know. And so. Now, let me be fair to NRS. They did try to give us a workaround.
But the problem is the workaround was half-assed and on the whole, not all the way effective. So let me talk about that. So NRS decided to give characters armor-breaking maneuvers, armor-breaking moves, I should say. For some characters, they're special moves. For other characters, they're normals. Some characters have just one. Other characters have multiple. Some characters' uh, armor break moves um, relaunch for a combo. Others do flat damage. You know, others just straight up break armor and do nothing else. Um, it does not directly address the breakaways. The breakaways were left intact. And so, it not only does, you know, did their solution not directly address the issue at hand, but the armor breaks themselves, um, they're a very mixed bag. <laughs> so these two characters on screen right here, Johnny Cage and Liu Kang, I don't even know what the hell Liu Kang's armor break is, to be honest with you. I think it's his uh, command grab? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I don't play the character. Johnny Cage, he has two armor breaks. One of them is his flippy kick, which has no other use other than breaking armor. The other one is his pseudo command grab called Pissed Off. It's nice. It's, it's very nice. Here's the problem with both of those armor breaks. You have to... You're, you're almost never going to break an opponent's armor mid-screen with either of those moves. You have to practice quite a bit if you're going to do a Johnny Cage combo and anticipate the opponent's going to break. And, I mean, I'm not above practicing things in the practice room, because that's what it's for. Practicing things in the lab. But here's the problem. Johnny Cage has to go through all this hell to break somebody's armor, but a character like Kotal Khan, who's better than Johnny Cage now, he can just do down back triangle, and he breaks all kinds of armor, doesn't matter what you try to do. Or a character like Jade, um, Jade can just do her glow kick whenever she thinks you're gonna drop. And if she's right, she breaks your armor. If she's wrong, she still kicks you full screen and plays her zoning game. So, no matter what, she's at advantage. If you think, or she thinks you're going to drop out of her combo. Why, oh why, did Johnny Cage not get a shadow kick as his armor break? That would make sense. Or why, oh why, did he not get nut punch as his armor break? That would make even more sense. No, they didn't do that. But even if they had chosen those moves, you still have to land the armor breaks. And that's part of the problem. Half of the cast that has armor breaks, they can't even land the motherfuckers. Like Scorpion and Sub-Zero? <laughs> they have some pretty damn good armor breaks, if you can get them to hit. Scorpion, you know, it's very rare that Scorpion gets to armor break anybody because you could just drop out of his shit immediately. As soon as you see him launch you with an EX teleport, you can drop out before he gets a chance to do squat. So his armor break just might as well not even exist. Sub-Zero's armor break is his forward four, and uh, it kind of works, sparingly, but problem is you can barely launch the opponent high enough to get this armor break and even if you launch them high enough like off of an uppercut or something like that or off of rising ice you're probably gonna whiff the damn thing and look stupid and when you whiff this forward four you put yourself in combo jeopardy so you could potentially open yourself up to being comboed for trying to stop somebody from dropping out of your combo So, you've made this situation much more convoluted than it needed to be, Netherrealm.
instead of simply just addressing Breakaway. Now, how could they have done it? They could have done one of several things. Well, for starters, the Breakaway input needs to be down in L2 because it's way too easy to accidentally trigger a Breakaway. That was an easy-ass fix that they never bothered to attempt. I don't know why, they just didn't do it. Secondly, uh... The thing that they should have done with Breakaway is... They should have made the actual Breakaway animation... Much slower. In other words... Uh make the opponents or make the person breaking away fall out of the combo at about half of the speed that they do now they should be gently floating towards the ground sort of you know because what that does is it gives people it gives the the, the comboing person time to see oh he's breaking let me time my breakaway move now you know what I'm saying? And then some of these other breakaway or armor break mechanics, these moves that maybe are too slow or whatever, now it gives me more time to, to make sure that they connect. That's probably the best way to address the, the breakaway system. Now, what I've also seen is people limit the breakaways to one per match or one per round or whatever I mean I'm cool with that but I don't think that really addresses the problem the fundamental problem is that the breakaways are too damn powerful and they could potentially reward the person that made the wrong the wrong decision in neutral with a full combo the other thing that they needed to do with breakaway is once you successfully break away you need to be lying on the ground with a delayed wake up the long delay that way there's no chance of you comboing somebody those are two simple fixes that NRS could have tried and even if they would have led to other consequences at least they could say they addressed the breakaway system they never did it and now they're not going to and that's garbage so this leads me to my next uh, error that MK11 still has the wake up system now I am a proponent of people being able to get off the ground I'm a proponent of defensive options in a fighting game I don't think I don't personally believe that when you knock somebody down you should just get to pressure them for free in any and all situations I don't, I don't agree with that some people do I do not However, once you get knocked down, you should definitely feel like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. Oh, this is not good. And currently, Mortal Kombat 11, and this has been, it has been this way since the very beginning. Uh, the person knocked down might actually be stronger on the ground than they are standing in some instances. And uh, it's not good. So what are your wake-up options? Well, you can just block. That's probably the least popular option, and it's the one that you see the least. Um, well, that's sort of the same thing. But, <laughs> yeah, people don't just get up and block. You can get up and attack. And because you have invincibility frames when you get up, you can actually beat some of your opponent's attacks depending on what you do. Like if you do a fast-ass jab, if you time it correctly, you can do your fast jab and actually attack the person that's supposed to be trying to apply Okazemi on you. Which is crazy. You can also delay your wake up. And there's two delay timings, short and long delay. Um, well, there were two timings. I think there's just one now. Yeah, there is just one timing now. You know. Um, so there's those. Then, you have 
Oh, wait, hold on. Here's another very popular option that really is strong. You can just jump when you get knocked down. This has happened so many times. I knock somebody down with a combo. I go to pressure them. These motherfuckers just jump straight up and down. And they actually get to combo me after I knock them down successfully and went to apply pressure. Bullshit. Right? So then as if those options aren't enough, you also have three other options. So one is wake up up two, which is universal. So this is supposed to be the move you do when your opponent jumps in on you. So it gives a full combo, but it's not invincible, right? Very fast. Some characters' up twos aren't worth a damn. Other up twos are really, really goddamn good. Then you have wake up up three, which is the invincible attack. So it's a mid that you do to just interrupt your opponent outright. And again, some characters up threes are trash, others are godlike and have dumb range. And many up threes actually catch jumping opponents, so it's like, why do up two when up three covers both options, right? Then, and this is probably the most controversial wake up option in my opinion, you have the wake up roll. Where you have an invincible roll where you can roll forwards or backwards. It's beaten by throws, and you can sort of bait it and kind of punish someone for doing so. But if you don't think they're, go they're going to roll and you go to try to pressure them, and they roll, they might get a full combo punish on you. Which is insane. So... The first options I listed, uh, you know, the, uh, the wake up buttons, you know, blocking. I forgot to mention, you can throw somebody on wake up too. Like, you can just wake up and throw a nigga. Yeah. So there's that option too. Uh, so wake up block, wake up throw, wake up jab, wake up jump. None of those require any resources whatsoever. No resources. You can just do them. So those are always at your disposal for no resource. Um, the wake up up twos and up threes each require a bar of offense and defensive meter as they should because they are offensive and defensive. The wake up roll, however, just requires one bar of off uh, defense meter. Just that one bar. No offense meter is required to roll. That's insane. It's an offensive tool. It gives you a full combo potentially. So it should be the same cost as your up two and up three. Point blank period. Now I used to not agree with that until I started playing combat league and fighting people that just, you know, that you think you're able to pressure. You finally knock their ass down, you get past their stuff. You fight with the lag, get past their, their garbage. You knock them down in the corner, you go to pressure them, they roll and kill you and win the match. Trash. Trash. Because in addition to all the other options that I named that you have to worry about, you have to worry about them comboing you too. You're already hesitant to press buttons on them, period. You don't even know where to stand against your opponent when you knock them down. Do you advance on them, go right up close, or do you hang back in case they roll? You never know, because if you hang back too far, you've just given them enough space to wake up and do a button or jump or whatever. So there's that issue. But if you go close, you then give them the option to up three, up two, attack, whatever. So there's nothing that you can do as the of offensive person that will cover every or most of your defensive player's options. The defender has control after they get knocked down. 
and that's not right. Even from someone that is a proponent of defense like I am. Not right. Okay. So what's another gripe? Fatal blows. Oh my god. Hold on, let me eat these hot tamales real quick. These motherfuckers good as fuck. And sip this imaginary tea. Okay. So, fatal blows. Let me say this. I actually like the idea of the fatal blow system. I prefer it to X-rays, actually. Because in Mortal Kombat 9 and MKX, a lot of characters' X-rays were actually kind of useless. For real, for real. If we being all the way honest. Only a couple X-rays were actually useful. And those were the ones that either hit full screen from the air or were either a low or an overhead. Or possibly ones that were projectiles or parries. And even then, why would you save all three of your bars for 33% when you could spend one bar and get a combo that's 40% or higher. You know what I'm saying? X-rays were barely justifiable in their use in the previous titles, so that's why they switched to a Fatal Blow system, which is triggered when your opponent's at a certain health percentage and is not tied to your meter. So I like that idea. The problem with the Fatal Blows is that a, you have to deal with them every goddamn match. That's one. Two, um, if your opponent does them and they miss or you block it, it comes back. So you got to deal with it again. Well, that's probably one of the biggest issues. Possibly the biggest issue. And then the tertiary problem with Fatal Blows is that if you block one... If you block many of them, some of them you can't even punish. You can't do shit about these fatal blows. You just have to worry about it, try to weather the storm, and then kill your opponent. So it's a comeback mechanic that is strong as hell and is kind of OD depending on who you are. Okay, so they should have been addressed this. And they tried to address this too. Oh, I also forgot to mention Fatal Blows are one of the few attacks in this game. I think the only attack that has armor. So these moves not only are barely punishable, guaranteed to occur, you know, once you get your opponent to 30% uh, health, and they come back, but... If your opponent knows you're going to attack them, they can just do the motherfuckers and their armor will just blow right through your attack and you'll you'll hit them. So it inspires scrubby ass gameplay. <sighs> so NRS tried to address fatal blows in several ways. One thing that they did was they reduced the duration of the armor. So the armor used to be active for eight frames. Now the armor is active for four frames, if I'm not mistaken. And that was a good change, though sometimes their armor still blows through your attacks. And it sucks. And it's whack. Whatever. Um, one other thing they did, that NRS did, was they tried to... Well, actually... I don't think it was even a fatal blow change per se. They did this this change sort of in the mid life cycle where they made all moves easier to punish, period. Like there used to be a time where you weren't able to punish moves that were like negative 10, negative 11, blah, blah, blah. It just wasn't happening. And then NRS made it easier to punish those kinds of moves. Um, 
and this of course affected fatal blows because now the ones that was barely negative or really negative and you just couldn't punish them now you could get somebody for doing one you know uh and to my knowledge i think that is all they did certain characters fatal blows they nerfed like Jax and aaron black and stuff like that and i think they nerfed frosts as well to a certain extent but they never fully addressed the issue with the fatal blow system for starters one of the first th changes i think they need to make is i think they need to change the health requirements i think the fatal blow should not trigger when you're at 30 percent health i think they should trigger when you're at 10 percent health let me explain why it is so easy to get your opponent to 30 percent health look at me in this match right now i'm damn near there so look right now now i have a fatal blow now he has to be careful with how he fights me because i have an 11 frame fast as hell damn near full screen fatal blow that he has to be mindful of of course he's not really being that mindful of it but whatever so it's mad easy to get your opponent to 30 percent that's why we see fatal blows be so frequent because it's mad easy to get them this is why we deal with them in every match by putting it to 10 percent there's going to be some matches where you don't even see a fatal blow period and that's what we need you know what i'm saying so i think that that would be a great change uh, another change that needs to be made to the Fatal Blows is they need to not have any pushback at all. None. None, none, none. Every Fatal Blow, when done up close or whatever, should put the Fatal Blower point blank at negative 20 or so in front of the opponent. As powerful as these moves are, they're unbreakable, they're flat damage, they can be done at the end of combos, all that kind of stuff. As powerful as these moves are, there needs to be a heavy price for messing one up. And there's currently not, because there's so many characters. A, a good chunk of the cast can do the Fatal Blows from full screen. So, if you block their stuff, so what? They don't care. You're full screen. You can't do nothing no way. You know what I'm saying? So there's that problem. Another good chunk of the cast, uh, even if they're not full screen when you do one, they push your ass so far back that you can barely punish them for doing the joint. Like Cabal and Sonya and Jade and Sometimes Sub-Zero, Scorpion, their fatal blows have so much pushback that if you get caught off guard with one, uh, they just get to, they get to do this unsafe move and get away with it. Oh, this boy left after he got his one victory. <laughs> he ain't want no more smoke, boy. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so... They get to do these fatal blows for free. That should not happen. They should be deaf. And they should put your ass right next door to your opponent asking to be punished. You know what I'm saying? They should be as unsafe as Shiva Stomp is now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if you whiff a Shiva Stomp, that ass is dead. Debt. D-E-A-D-T. Debt. You understand? Word. But, uh... That needs to occur. Um, I feel like there was one other thing I wanted to address. See, I didn't, you know, on my little notepad here, I didn't put little, every little bullet point of what needs to happen. I just put the big outline. But, uh, yeah, fatal blows need to be point blank. 
They need to not happen until the opponent is at 10% health. One other thing, this is what I almost forgot to mention. They need to go away if you're with them or they're blocked. They really should not come back. That's probably the scrubbiest thing about them. Is that they actually come back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. They have no business coming back when uh, when they're blocked or whiffed. They should just go away. If not for the round, the match. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it would make me no never mind uh, if they went away for the rest of the match. But if they went away for the rest of the round, cool. Uh, the only exception to that is those fatal blows that can be canceled like Joker and Johnny Cage you know they they wouldn't be subject to that but you know even they should have a little bit of limits on their shit but anyway so that's what fatal blows uh, require in my honest opinion okay so then we have the problem of general inequities in this game. Now, I get it. It's a fighting game. Certain characters are going to be better than others because of the normals and utility and the meta of the game and all that kind of stuff. I understand all that. However, when there is an equity in a fighting game or in any environment, there should be significant efforts to redress those inequities and you know make things more fair for everyone involved and there was not a significant effort made or a consistent and significant effort made on behalf of NRS to address the inequities in two particular areas crushing blows and the variation system so let me talk first about crushing blows there are some characters whose crushing blows are damn good. My main character, Sub-Zero, he has terrific crushing blows. Very, very good. And virtually none, I ain't gonna say virtually none, because there, there are a couple that require uh, the input of the opponent. But so many of his crushing blows, the more important ones, are fully controlled by the Sub-Zero player. So, crushing blows are in one of two categories in this game. Some of them require opponent participation, from what I, you know, as, as I categorize it. So, you have those crushing blows, for instance, where if the opponent techs a grab the wrong way, now your throw crushing blow is loaded. Or you have crushing blows that are based on a counter or a punish. Those require opponent participation. Because if your opponent never techs throws, you'll never get the throw crushing blow. It just won't happen. Right? And if your opponent always does safe stuff and only attacks within their footsie range or whatever... You're not going to get the counter-crushing blow either. So, in any instance, those crushing blows are are controlled by your opponent in part. Right? But then you have independent crushing blows. The ones where it's just you, the player, that controls how you get them and when. And Sub-Zero has two of the best. One of them is his 1-2-4 crushing blow. Uh, 1, 2, 4, that's triggered after an 8-hit combo or whatever. So, he has to do a combo that results in 8 hits, and then that crushing blow is triggered. That's very easy for Sub-Zero to do, especially if he has Rising Ice. So, Sub-Zero doesn't give a damn. He can wait until the very last moment... Drop that crushing blow on your ass and you dead. You dead. You just dead. You know. 
Um, but then his other crushing blow is the slide crushing blow. He hits two EX slides. The third one is going to crushing blow. And that thing is a damn near full screen fatal blow where he previously doesn't have one. You know what I'm saying? He can do this at the end of combos. He can do it as a way to punish your projectile. He can just do the damn thing. Doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Those are very good. And then he still has a throw crushing blow, which his throws are really good. He also has a counter crushing blow. Maybe that's com- opponent controlled, but he still has those. You know what I'm saying? But let's compare that to a character like Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage was at once, at one time considered a top five character, possibly the best character in the game, which I never believed that for a second. But let's let's go over his crushing blows. One of his crushing blows is Nut Punch. So he gets the Nut Punch crushing blow if it's the first hit of the match, which it never will be. (laughs) You'll never hit the opponent for the first time with a Nut Punch. Or if it's a Punish. Okay, the Punish is a little bit more reasonable, but here's the problem with the Punish. Nut Punch is 13 frames. Why there if if the opponent is gonna be negative thirteen, chances are they're gonna be out of range of that nut punch. You know what I'm saying? So you're just not gonna hit that move as a counter. It's just not gonna happen. So that crushing blow's unviable. Johnny Cage also has forward three four. No, forward four three, sorry. As a crushing blow. So it's a knee followed up with a high. And the trigger is, if only the high connects, it's a crushing blow. Neat idea in theory. Here's the problem, though. The high part of that string is slow as fuck. Slower than fuck. Also, you can completely duck underneath it and full combo punish Johnny for even trying to do it. So that move is more of a risk to himself than it is to the opponent. So that's a bad crushing blow as well. Um, what else? Oh, he has a camera crushing blow. And the camera one's not too bad. So he has to whiff two camera attacks. So if he just snaps the camera out in the neutral twice. And then if he EX is the third one and it hits... It's going to crushing blow. That's nice. Here's the problem, though. Johnny Cage does not want to be snapping the camera in the middle of the neutral because the move is slow as hell. While he's doing that, he's opening himself up to getting hit with fireballs or whatever. Okay? Um, It's just not good. It's not a good look. But it's a decent crushing blow. It does a lot of damage, so I'll give him that. The the, uh, the other two crushing blows don't even do that much damage. Like, the nut punch crushing blow does damn near no damage at all, bruh. So, it's not even really worth it to do. And then the 4-3 four, uh, four, crushing blow, it, it kind of does some damage, you know what I'm saying? But you can't combo off of it. It's just flat damage. And you, you have to be playing a dummy or a noob to to hit somebody with it. Um, I feel like there's another one with the brass knuckles or whatever. I forget. That move is useless. But that goes into another issue that I had. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But Johnny Cage does have one good crushing blow. And that crushing blow is the shades. So if Johnny Cage successfully uses a, uh, a fatal blow cancel in a combo... He can throw his shades, and that does a crushing blow. It does a a shit ton of damage, and it allows for a combo opportunity. Very good crushing blow. Leads to some insane comebacks, and that's one of the reasons Johnny Cage is still a good character in this game, even though he got nerfed. However, this crushing blow 
requires you to be at 30% health or below. So, it's literally a rescue kind of KB. And if you don't get a clean ass um, opening, like, if you don't get a clean hit on a string that you can cancel in a fatal blow, you just don't get this crushing blow at all, you know? But my point is this. I listed three, no, four Sub-Zero crushing blows. I listed four Johnny Cage crushing blows. Johnny Cage can only really use one of them. Sub-Zero can use all of them, really, but at least three. And so there's some massive inequities in crushing blows in this game. And those needed to be addressed. They really did. Um, and that right there, I mean, I could just, there's example after example after example of crushing blows that just really need to be reworked. Some of them are useless. Some of them have requirements that are just completely unrealistic and don't work with the synergy of the character. Others you know, uh, are so easy a child can do them. So it's like, what the hell? Why would you give this character this easy-ass crushing blow? This scrubby-ass crushing blow? Like Sindel? Um, and Gearus? But I ain't gonna get into all that. So, those needed to be addressed. And then, the other area of great inequity is the variation system itself. Um, and I'm not talking about in terms of necessarily balance, but you have so many moves in this game that are utterly useless, completely uncompelling. They are too expensive for the actual value that they bring. Or... They're just not even worth having, even if, though they're one slot. You know, I brought up the example of Raiden before. You know, Raiden needs to spend two of his special move slots just to do combos. And a lot of characters have that problem. Baraka kind of has that problem. Uh, let me see. Well, maybe not a lot of characters have that problem. A lot of characters don't have that problem. They can just combo. They they can just combo just because. Rain has that problem. You know. Uh, as part of why they're, you know, not rated as high as everybody else. Because they have to spend mad resources just to combo people. And what happens is, some of these characters have alternative combo methods that are just not as good like so with Raiden Raiden has a variation if you're playing Raiden it's storm cell and teleport that's it nothing else is really worth using because he also has a second move called Joe push that allows for combos but that thing is terrible it's two slots and it's not half as good as Storm Cell. You know. And and I think it replaces something important as well. So there's that problem. And Joe Push doesn't even allow for universal combos. Like, you don't get the easy ass hit confirms into that move. So there's that issue. Uh, another character that's sort of affected by stuff like this is Melina. Like I said, if you're playing Melina, you play one variation of Melina. You use Playtime, you use Command Grab, which is called Stabby Scotch, and then your third move is one of a, a list of situationally useful special moves. Um, that's about, about all you get with Molina. She doesn't take advantage of the variation system at all because none of her special moves are compelling enough to give her a viable playstyle. 
Shao Kahn kind of has this problem where he has a bunch of special moves that ain't really useful. The taunts are risky and they take mad long. Um, his other projectiles slow as hell. Very slow. It's a decent projectile because it's a mid. But it's so slow and it's literally the same speed as his uh, universal projectile. So there's no point in equipping it because it doesn't give you any advantage other than it being flat. And then he has a, a third projectile, no, two other projectiles, one of which can be thrown from the air. The other one is a high but hits from the other direction. Both of them joints are slow as hell and are limited in their use. So they're not all that useful, you know. Um, what else does Khan have? He has this other combo launching move, which doesn't hit as hard and it's slower than his default sh shoulder charge, you know. But it's good because it sets up better for armor break moves, but it's slow as fuck, so you can't punish people in the neutral with it, and so you lose utility. It's just not as good as the other move that it's supposed to be replacing. And there's actually a lot of that in this game, where you have moves that are replaced by something that's not as good. Now, let me give you a non-example of that. My boy Cage on the screen here. Nut Punch is good. It's his combo launch. Leads to a lot of damage. It's a restand, blah, 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 right? Okay. Nut Punch is replaced by Camera. Camera's also very good. It also leads to a combo. It does not launch, so it leads to unbreakable combos. Both of those moves are compelling. They replace each other, but each one of them is is very useful in, in different situations. So, I have two variations of Cage, one of which has Nut Punch, one of which has Camera. And depending on who I'm fighting and how they play, I switch between the two. You know what I'm saying? If I have somebody that I know likes to drop out of combos, I'll pick the version of Cage that has the camera. That way they can't drop out of my stuff. If I don't give a damn about that, then I pick this variation. Call me daddy. You know what I'm saying? That's how the moves are supposed to function. But what actually winds up happening in most cases is uh, the moves that are being replaced are... You know, the replaceable moves are better than the moves that are supposed to be replacing them. Take, for instance, Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero has Slide, which is a godlike move. Probably his best special move in the game. Leads to a crushing blow. 11 frame move. Punishes. Hits from three-fourths of the screen. Is also a low. Side switches if you meter burn. You know what I'm saying? And is can be tough for some characters to punish if you, if they block it. So you have that move being replaced by his cold shoulder. Cold shoulder is slower. It has less range. It's a mid. Um, it has a crushing blow, but you got to spend... Eh, it's, it's all right, crushing blow-wise. But it's inferior to slide, so you should just not even replace it at all. You know? So it's not compelling. And there's a bunch of moves in this game that are not compelling. And NRS should have definitely addressed those moves, and they didn't. You know what I'm saying? Then you have moves that are just straight up useless. Like, um, Johnny Cage has, uh, he has this move that was very cool in theory, so this also goes into my other point about replaceable moves. So he has this, uh, what do you call it? A stand-in or whatever? So it replaces his shadow kick, which, that's a terrible idea. But what happens is he calls out a clone of himself. I think the move's called Stunt Double. So he calls out a Stunt Double, and the Stunt Double either clobs the opponent with an overhead, rams them with a mid... And if he meter burns it, the stunt double actually grabs the opponent and allows Johnny Cage to follow up with a combo. Very cool, in theory. But here's the problem. 
the move's slow as hell. It's slow as hell. And though the stunt double comes out, even if Johnny Cage gets hit, you can jump over the stunt double and combo Johnny Cage for even doing the move. So it's just not compelling to use. And it replaces a damn good move. Shadow Kick is a very fast reversal. It punishes mid-screen unsafeness. You know what I'm saying? And it pushes the opponent towards the corner. No reason to give that move up at all. And for it to be replaced by something that can actually get Johnny Cage killed. So that's a bad look. But, yeah. And then the last thing, as we talk about moves and the contents of the uh, in within the context of the variation system we have moves that are banned from competitive play like sub-zero's uh ice puddle now for the half of the game's life this game was locked behind competitive preset variations you couldn't just pick and choose what special move you wanted to use in combat league and other competitive modes you had to go with their nrs's uh variations whether or not they made sense and ice puddle was never a part of any of those variations so if you wanted to use the move you were pretty much limited to casual mode only it's like i right, cool Moves pretty good now, I ain't gonna lie. Well, at that point, it was pretty good. You know, it killed most wake-up options. Because if you tried to roll, you you know, you got hit. If you tried to up two, you got hit. You couldn't jump or attack out of it at all. So it was just, it was pretty good in that regard. So then, NRS decides, hey, let's unlock these moves. Let's let people use custom moves in combat league and other tournament modes all right cool but what did they do they fucked around and banned the ice the uh, ice puddle and i'm like what you banned this move for what reason i guess nrs decided that the move was too powerful but they never gave any kind of explanation they never sat there and detailed what made the move so strong that it needed to be banned and they never indicated what they would be doing that they would try to adjust the move and tone it down so that it can be unbanned again now this move is perma banned from any kind of competitive play and they didn't adjust it at all and then what's worse yet is that the move actually got a nerf not a direct nerf the move got an indirect nerf because what happened was they addressed the knockdown system in this game and people get off the ground nine frames sooner than they used to so this move that used to be really good to stop wake ups now the move's not as good because you have nine extra frames to jump and attack the opponent that's doing it so You nerf this move indirectly, but it's still banned, and now you're not gonna even fix the shit? Shame on y'all. You fucked up. And Sub Zero's not the only one. Um, Rain has a banned move that's actually really cool. Um, other characters have some banned moves. I feel like Sindel is one of them. I don't remember. But it's like four or five banned variation moves in this game I know Frost has one and her move didn't actually need to be banned it just needed to have a conflict with another move that made it broken as hell but they never bothered to put that conflict into play and so now this move is just banned permanently and it really didn't need to be so yeah um, you have these banned moves and then we also have useless moves that are never picked. And so you have all these damn moves in this game from these characters. And only a, a small subset of them are actually worth a damn. 
So the variation system is fucked in this game for that reason, unfortunately. Now, to be clear, I still prefer this over what we had in MKX because though the MKX variations were a little bit more cohesive and stuff like that, you also didn't have no choice at all. And some variations were just completely useless, and a lot of them were. A lot of them were inferior versions of the other variations. And you still had the problem where if a character beat one variation of your of a character, he beat all of them. Like Sub-Zero was an example. Sub-Zero's best variation in MKX was Grandmaster. If a character beat Grandmaster Sub-Zero, he whooped Cryomancer and Unbreakable. That's just how that went. And the whole purpose of the variation system was to stop all this damn counterpicking. You were supposed to be able to pick your favorite character and switch up your style depending on who you're fighting so that you could fight everybody. And that didn't happen. The variation system failed in that regard. Because for most characters, they just had to pick somebody else. They did. They just had to. They were different from each other, but they weren't so different to where now suddenly the opponent has to pick some new guy. Or, you know. Or they weren't so different to where, you know, now you, you beat my you beat my variation one, but now I'm gonna switch to variation two and whoop your ass. That's not how it worked in MKX for the most part. If they beat variation one, Variation 2 lost just as bad or worse, and then Variation 3 wasn't even worth a damn. So, that's what happened in that game. So at least in MK11, you do really have a chance to pick your one character and just switch the variations and whoop on just about anybody. And some characters can do that, but then most of the cast really can't, because they're just not good and they have a bunch of useless moves and they have some moves that are banned and so the variation system failed again which is why for the next game honestly if since they demonstrated NRS has demonstrated that they can't get variations right and they tried them two different ways I ain't trying to see no third times the, ch the charm shit I'm ready for them to just go back to the MK9 style. Where you had one version of a character. They had a bunch of special moves. They had a bunch of normals and shit like that. And if you have a bunch of... If you have some moves that are not as powerful as they need to be. Then NRS just buffs the character or they buff the moves. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a hell of a lot easier than trying to deal with the variation shit. Honestly. I'm ready for them to to put that away. They, they can stop that now. You know? So. All in all, it sounds like I'm hating on this game. Like, I have a bunch of gripes with Mortal Kombat 11. The fact is, I don't. I'm going to keep playing this game. And if it turns out that the next NRS title is in, is in Justice 3, I'm going to be playing MK11. Because I'm, I'm not buying no Injustice 3, because Sub-Zero's not going to be on it. So, I'm a Mortal Kombat guy. I ride with Mortal Kombat. It's my favorite franchise. I've been sticking with NRS since they were Midway and all that good stuff. And I want to continue to do so, but they're going to need to change their practices because they tripping. You can't sit there, make a bunch of promises about a game, fail to deliver on a bunch of those promises and implications and hints and shit like that. You can't fail to deliver on that shit and then turn around and be like, yeah, we ain't doing shit. 
We ain't doing shit else with this game. Sorry. They didn't even say sorry. They just said they ain't doing shit else with the game. When there's still a bunch of issues that needed to be addressed. I mean, we've dealt with that shit. I mean, if you're someone that played all the titles, we've dealt with this for four games now. MK9, Injustice 1, MKX, Injustice 2. They've had that problem where there were still glaring ass issues in the game that were complained about from day fucking one. And NRS never addressed them. And then they leave and do a new title and never return to the old ones. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's garbage. That's not right. That cycle needs to end. And um, I'm going to be a lot more hesitant with this next Mortal Kombat. I really am. And that's crazy because typically as soon as a Mortal Kombat game is announced, I'm buying it. I don't give a damn. Typically, right? But now I'm going to be more cautious. And that's unfortunate that you got to be cautious with your favorite game franchise. And to be clear, it's highly possible that a lot of this is not the fault of NRS. See, because NRS is controlled by a corporate entity known as WB, Warner Brothers. And I know very well how corporations fuck shit up. You know, corporate malfeasance and greed take a product that was pure and good and fuck it up and make it stale and repetitive and take the life out of that product. It's happened to hip hop. It happened to pro wrestling. You know what I'm saying? It's happened to our politics. It's happened to our schools, education. Because that fucking OD testing with the, you know, standardized testing that they do to these kids, that was a corporate ass idea. So that motherfuckers could sell testing software and shit. Um, the corporate influence or the corporatization of various aspects of our society has had nothing but a negative effect on those aspects. Period. And so it would be no surprise to learn that, in fact, WB is interfering with NRS's ability to do what they want to do. Okay? But if that is the case, then NRS needs to step up their communication game. They need to let us know what the fuck going on. You know what I'm saying? Tell us. Be transparent. Be open. Be honest. Even if you got to send coded messages, I don't give a damn. Let us know what's happening. That way we know that you're not just saying fuck us. Because we rock with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Us and our MK fans... We've been here from the get-go, and we still try to be here, but this game has eroded a lot of people's faith in Mortal Kombat and in NRS, and that's not good. They have to restore that goodwill. So NRS needs much better communication. They need to update us with whatever the hell's going on. We need to know when patches are coming out we need to know the nature of the patches or some idea have some idea of the nature of the patches uh we need to know if there's how many dlc packs they're planning on we need to know all that shit ahead of time because when i watch other companies when they roll out their patches and shit like that, it's organized. It's put together. It's planned. It's deliberate. You know what I'm saying? Their fans are not surprised. You know what I'm saying? They're not living in a state of persistent limbo and all that kind of stuff the way that we are. That shit's not happening. Like, it's done in a very professional manner. And here we are having to rely on dubious ass Ed Boon tweets 
as he trolls people. And that trolling shit needs to stop on the real because why the fuck are you going to troll the people that's been riding with you this whole time? Some of us have been playing since the damn arcade era. Now, I was a little bit too young to actually play the arcades when they came out. But when I would go to barber shops and shit like that and find Mortal Kombat machines, I played the motherfuckers. Yes, I did. Before I ever got a home console. But some of us have been rocking since virtually the very beginning. And you don't want to shit on those people. Because regular working people are already getting shitted on in a billion different ways. And at some point, they ain't going to take that shit no more. And now it's a pun intended. You understand? And so you don't want to catch yourself in the wrath of a bunch of angry ass people that are pissed off that various aspects of their lives are, are fucked up due to people's fucking greed and malfeasance and shit. You understand? And so... NRS needs to step their game up for real. Ed Boone needs to step up his game up for real. Tyler Lansdowne needs to step up his motherfucking game. All of them. All of them. And if it's WB that's interfering and they stopping people, stopping all these guys that I just mentioned from stepping up their game, then we need to know that and we need to do something. We need to take action. Help NRS buy, them, buy their own shit back out of the WB contract or whatever the hell. You know what I'm saying? But something needs to change. NRS needs to do better. Point blank period. You understand? Because like I said, I'm a big fan of this game and this franchise and if I feel this strongly enough to make a hour 20 minute long video talking about the problems you already know that people that didn't like the game or hated the game feel even stronger. They feel even more slighted than I did. You understand? So, something needs to be done. But, alas, I have talked long enough. And with that, I'll catch y'all later. One.